In 11 BC, with the coastal region under control, Drusus turned his attention to the interior lands. From Vetera, he crossed the Rhine and ordered the construction of a bridge over the Lipper River. The army followed the river deep into the lands of different Germanic nations, including the Cherusci. Among the tribe was a six-year-old boy named Arminian. That day, he kept his distance from the Roman army, but they would meet again one day. The army continued into the Wesser, engaging in minor skirmishes until Drusus halted the army. The Romans constructed a fort in the Tanguis Mountains and settled in. Powell says it was the first time that Roman troops spent the winter on the right bank of the Rhine. On his way back to the Rhine, the army was ambushed by the Cherusci at Arbalo. Once the Romans entered the narrow pass, they were attacked from all sides. Unfortunately, we do not have details on Drusus' leadership at the battle, but we do know that he was able to hold off the Germans. Finally, the elder describes it as a brilliant victory, and his troops claimed him Imperator. Drusus returned to Gaul, and apparently the news of the Germanic Wars were keeping the newly conquered province in order. For his heroics across the Rhine, Augustus granted Drusus a triumph. Drusus returned to London in the spring season of 10 BC. While away in Rome, his legates constructed a line of forts along the Lippa River to relay supplies from Vetera. However, the main campaign would not be driven along the Lippa River. Drusus instead launches from a base further up the Rhine in Mongontiacum. The army marched into Chatti territory. The Chatti had formed an alliance with the Sungumbriae, and together they attacked the Romans near Madium in the Tanguis Mountains. We do not know the details of the engagement, but Powell notes that Drusus and the army fight off both tribes and make it to the Western River, but had to turn around home when winter approached. Upon his return, Drusus was elected consul for the following year, January 1st, 9 BC. At the beginning of the next campaign season a few months later, he arrived back in Germania at Mont Conticum, determined more than ever to reach the Elbe River. For the next few weeks, he planned out the next campaign and reviewed reports from deputies at the camps along the Rhine and Lippa rivers. This time around, he would not be stopped. There was something different about Drusus's aggression this time around. According to Dio, Drusus was growing impatient and frustrated with the progress of the campaign. He forced Marcus' troops deeper into Germania, burning everything as they went. The Chatti were attacked, and after a series of brutal engagements, Drusus beat them back. The army marched as far as the territory of the feared Swebii, but Drusus did not pick a fight with them. Instead, he went northeast, and after a long march, finally reached the left bank of the Elbe River. Although he had reached his goal, Drusus could not take a break. Winter was fast approaching, and yet again, he was in danger of being trapped in enemy territory. Drusus had gone farther than he had in any of his previous campaigns. Mongontiacum was 310 miles away. However, his mind was made up. He would not turn back this time and ordered the army to continue forward. But something strange happened then. Dio and Suetonius explained that in a nightmare, Drusus was visited by a very large Germanic woman. She told the general to leave these lands and warned him that he must do so before he runs out of time. The Romans were very superstitious people and Drusus decided to obey the ghost wishes. He created a monument at Magnaberg and ordered the army back to the Rhine. But this march had an unexplained darkness over it. Wolves were seen around the camp as if they were circling prey. The sound of women were heard crying as if they lost a child, but no women were around the camp. In this strange, weird, scary, hostile land, the army continued to the Rhine. At some point, Drusus was wounded in an accident. He fell off his horse and broke his leg and shortly caught a fever. It was serious enough that news reached Tiberius, who was stationed in Pavia. The future emperor traveled across hundreds of miles of hostile lands with only a barbarian guide to reach Drusus. Tiberius had arrived just in time to have a few final words with his brother. 30 days after his fall, Drusus was dead. He was 29 years old. The Romans realized immediately that they lost a great man, and the Senate blessed Drusus with many honors. Among the most infamous is the one by which we know him today, Germanicus. Thank you for watching.